we will be probably the first country in Africa to eliminate TB. Yes. So we can do the TB screening everywhere in the island, even as you know, such as the group of islands. Also on the main island and on the outer islands also, we can do the screening for, for TB. We can collect the sputum. So anyone coming into the health facility, a suspected case of TB, we will do all the sputum as rapid tests. A rapid gene expert, all the sputum, it's only the follow-up sputum that we'll be testing through microscopy. Yeah. So we do as treatment, we're using the WHO guidelines for drug susceptible TB. Whereas the second line, we only have level fluxes in at the moment. Um, we have had two cases of query resistant TB, but uh, clean, that was through the gene expert, but clinically the patients did respond to the normal drug susceptible treatment. So it was not reported as uh, drug resistant TB. One of the main issues that we're having at the moment is that we are not able to do cultures, which we were able to do before. So we're having a lot of procurement issues. The cost of buying the LG culture media is more, um, the amount we need is very low compared to the freight that we need to, the cost of the freight to bring it in. So this is one area where I guess we can look for support or assistance from another country if they are able to, to help us. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we do have four gene expert machines. Yeah. So we're doing re the regular screening for sputum. Like I said, all mm -hmm. sputums, we will be screening doing the rapid test as first line. Great. So no, no sputum smear microscopy. As, as a first line, no sputum sphere microscopy, right? As a first line no, no. or upfront? No. So 100% no. molecular test. Yeah. Great. 100%. Uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, decentralization, it's the doctor that moves around the islands. Yeah. So we have monthly clinics on the other islands. Yeah. So, and, but the sample is collected on the outer islands and then transported to the main laboratory for, for testing. We do not have point of care tests on the, the main two other islands, which maybe it's something that we can look into. But like okay, for us, the key population would be injecting drug users, people who, who use drugs. This is one area that is causing us problem, which I think one, one thing we should invest in is to be more proactive in that group, offer them services, decentralized services for, to, for their centers, so that we can actively screen for TB, especially the contact tracing, so that they can be put on um, TB treatment very early. The other issue is adherence to treatment in that group of population. We have a lot of interaction with methadone and the TB treatment. So they, most of the time they choose the methadone over the TB treatment because they get withdrawal when they take the two together. So I guess this is one area that we really need to work really hard on it. The TB and HIV prevalence is still very low at the moment. Less than 10% of the cases that we get per year is HIV positive. But as the population of drug users grows, well, I think the association will get bigger. So this is one thing that we need to, to, to sort out. Um, right now, we do test and treat since 2014 for HIV. Maybe that's why the number, the, the co-infection between TB and HIV is very, very low. So as soon as you are detected HIV positive, you are screened, you are put on treatment for, for HIV. Everyone on with low CD4 will be screened for TB and you will put, be put on treatment. Yeah, so the other group of key population is alcoholics also, <laughs> that we're having a, a big issue. Not really with the diabetes yet, but with alcoholics again, with the treatment adherence, uh, coming to the health facilities for, for treatment is a big issue. Yeah, so hopefully with the family support and the health facility support, we can get through that. Only a one-off, but it is an issue. Even if one patient escape, doesn't take treatment, it's a, it's a very real issue. So we, do, we are conscious of this, that it does affect treatment adherence. So welcome, friends, to another episode of NTB Dialogues. 
As we know that we began NTB dialogues at the midpoint since the government's committed to NTB in 2015. So about 90, over 90 months have passed by since then and 90 months are left to 2030. Uh, progress or towards ending TB is uh, off the track in most places globally, uh, ex barring few exceptions. So uh, today we have a special guest, uh, in Dr. Louis Morel, Medical Registrar at Communicable Diseases Control Unit at Seychelles. Welcome, Dr. Louis. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you Thank for inviting you. me. A real, a real pleasure, uh, and it will be important for us to learn insights from your very long tenure, uh, you know, at the Ministry of Health, and uh, of course, at the, being at the forefront of the fight against TB uh, in Seychelles context. So, uh, Dr. Luin, uh, uh, she has a very uh, illustrious, uh, 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 brief bio. It's brief by no means, oh, but I will just give you some highlights. She uh, held her education at University of in New Zealand, in, uh, then did her further studies in dermatology at National University of Singapore, then in HIV AIDS uh, related uh, further trainings and courses from University of Bordeaux, and then uh, in, from Tropical Medicine Royal College of Physicians in UK, and Tropical Medi Medicine and International uh, Health from the prestigious London School of Tropical Medicine. So uh, welcome, Dr. Lewin, really impressed and really uh, privileged to have you amongst us. Thank you. So, thank you. So, Dr. Luin, uh, as you know, we are at the midpoint of uh, fighting TB uh, globally in terms of timelines. So, can you please give us an overview of various Seychelles at the currently compared to 2015? Uh, so, as you know, Seychelles is a small island in the in middle of the Indian Ocean. With this year, the for the first time, the population surpassed 100,000. So we have a case incidence in 2016 of nine per 100,000. And this year it went up. Uh, last year we had 15 cases per 100,000. So it's still overall less than 20 per 100,000. We are in the elimination phase, but we have noticed that the incidence has gone up a bit, or almost doubled in uh, 2022. But overall, what we've noticed is that we detected a lot of cases of extrapulmonary TB using a gene expert. So that's why the number of cases went up a bit in 20, 2022. But overall, the TB program is working very well. And we should be back on track, I think. The incidence should go down for the next few years. Um, the contribution of uh, non sexual to the TB burden is about 25%. So we do have a 15% um, population out of the 100,000 who are non Seychelles coming into work in Seychelles. So there is a big contribution as well to the number of cases. Um, we do screen as border control only with a chest X-ray. So hopefully later on we can introduce to the screening for latent TB as well, which is something that we were not doing. So for us to do that, we need to invest in better testing for latent TB, which uh, right now we have, we only doing the skin test of close contacts at the moment. So we do provide um, TPT also, um, prevention therapy, or to all, um, we screen the close contacts and all those with positive uh, results, we do offer them. But as you know, latent TB treatment is still optional. It's not compulsory. Um, so some people start or some still refuse. They want to wait until they get the TB for them to be to, to start treatment. But at the moment, it's still optional. So we do not get a lot of uptake on treatment for TPT. Yeah, for the ch ch um, TB in children, we haven't had a case for more than 15 years now in children which is something that we will look forward for the future for us to do a study in the stool. Um, we want to do the gene expert stool study and to see if we can detect a TB in uh, admissions, hospital admissions in children, so that we can certify ourselves that we are free from TB in children. Yeah, so that will be one of the few things we'll be doing next um, 
hopefully in the next month, few months, few years for us to achieve the elimination of tuberculosis. I think if we do put all these things, um, um, we are set, we are able to invest in all these things to put in place, we will be probably the first country in Africa to eliminate TB. This is surely one of our goals. Amen. Let's hope that happens. Really, uh, all our prayers, uh, and let's hope Seychelles leads from the front in uh, towards TB elimination as well. Uh, so, so doc Dr. Lewin, can you give us a better understanding? So, how of 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 case finding? So, is it like symptomatic people come to the clinics or centers, or is it like act, like active case finding, which is happening in other countries where you are screening people using chest X-rays and molecular tests? Uh, uh, how is it happening? So, can you just give us some sense? Yes. So we can do the TB screening everywhere in the island, even as you know, such as the group of islands. Also on the main island and on the outer islands also, we can do the screening for, for TB. We can collect the sputum. So anyone coming into the health facility, a suspected case of TB, we will do all the sputum as rapid tests. A rapid gene expert, all the sputum, it's only the follow-up sputum that we'll be testing through microscopy. Yeah. So we do as treatment, we're using the WHO guidelines for drug susceptible TB. Whereas the second line, we only have level fluxusin at the moment. Um, we have had two cases of query resistant TB, but uh, clean, that was through the gene expert, but clinically the patients did respond to the normal drug susceptible treatment. So it was not reported as uh, drug resistant TB. One of the main issues that we're having at the moment is that we are not able to do cultures, which we were able to do before. So we're having a lot of procurement issues. The cost of buying the LG culture media is more, um, the amount we need is very low compared to the freight that we need to, the cost of the freight to bring it in. So this is one area where I guess we can look for support or assistance from another country if they are able to, to help us. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we do have four gene expert machines. Yeah. So we're doing re the regular screening for sputum. Like I said, all mm -hmm. sputums, we will be screening doing the rapid test as first line. Great. So no, no sputum smear microscopy. As, as a first line, uh, no sputum sphere microscopy, right? As a first line no, no. or upfront? No. So 100% no. molecular test. Yeah. Great. 100%. Uh, amazing. Wonderful. Let's hope that that happens in every country. <laughs> Wonderful, Dr. Louis. Is there any referral systems, like for instance, people with diabetes or HIV who are asymptomatic and may, uh, may, 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 it, uh, are they being getting screened for TB? Yeah. And do you so in terms of uh, decentralization, it's the doctor that moves around the islands. Yeah, so we have monthly clinics on the other islands. Yeah, so, and but the sample is collected on the outer islands and then transported to the main laboratory for, for testing. We do not have point of care tests on the, the main uh, two other islands which maybe it's something that we can look into. But like I said, we only had 15 cases last year for now. Yeah, for now it's not an issue. I guess as the workload increase, if it is to increase, then we can see how we can invest further to the outer islands. Like last year, I did not get any cases from the other two islands, but there were some, some people that were screened from there. Yes, as a cost-effective measure to invest in the other two islands with much smaller population than the main one, for now it's not uh, it's not cost-effective. Right. Okay. Thanks but, a lot uh, for the help. Active... Yeah. Oh, please, sorry, sorry to yeah. interrupt you again. Yeah, please no, continue. No, okay. <laughs> so, but everyone that comes in with an abnormal X-ray, even if they did not present with the specific symptoms of uh, tuberculosis. We will advise screening for the sputum. We we'll definitely move on to the sputum screening. Yeah. Right. 
Very important. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot. And Dr. Lewin, can you also just give us a better sense of the treatments? Uh, for example, for latent TB, is it the uh, one month regimen, the new one month regimen, uh, which has been approved by the WHO or the four month uh, regimen for drug sensitive and six month for drug resistant, the BPAL? M or BPAL L. So just wanted to have a sense of, of, of uh, or are there plans we're for that? We're still on the six to... month. Six month for drug sensitive? Yeah, we're still yes. on the six okay. month. Yes, yes. drug okay. sensitive. Yes. And latent TB? For latent TB also, still on the six eyes on okay. for six okay. months. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are soon yeah. we're going to review the guidelines. We'll see where. Yes. Yeah. Let, Hopefully yeah, we can review soon. Yes, ma'am, please do, because uh, these treatments are uh, very less toxic, shorter duration, and so more effective. Dr. Lewin, um, you saw some rise in TB. Is, was it due to COVID? Do you have any, can we have some insights on? Yes. Yeah. During the COVID period, like all countries, the Genex Wag machine was taken over <laughs> for COVID testing. And for us, the same lab that was doing the TB tests was do, the one doing the COVID testing. So we did have major delay in getting results. And then we had a few, not a lot, a few um, TB and COVID co-infection as well. Um, we think the increase in the number of COVID can, I think other countries also might see this, that as you know, you get repeated COVID infections, it lowers your immunity. So some, there might be an increase of the number of TB cases diagnosed in other countries as well. It's from the experience in the in the clinic, not uh, in a study setting. So I think other countries might see it as well. And the other issue is that uh, in Seychelles, where you are still isolating um, TB positive patients, we mm -hmm. were still doing that. What happened during COVID is that we could not do that. So most of patients were managed at their house with a family member responsible for giving them the treatment. Um, we, most of the patients did take the medicine, only one defaulted. So I think this is one thing that we probably will still keep doing because most of the patients did adhere to the treatment. What we want to move now, because before during the COVID era, we did not have access to the main health centers as well for DOTS. So now, slowly, slowly, we are going back to dots at the health facilities as well. On the two other islands where they have um, um, the main population, they all the facilities have x-rays now at the moment. Okay. They have. So, yeah. So, Wonderful. So no need, I guess it has right? to be yeah. really okay. remote, remote population. But Seychelles is very small. <laughs> very, very small. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With, uh, yeah. Health facilities accessible within twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's hope uh, uh, it's not about small. It's about keeping people safe and healthy. So, which you are doing it so uh, yeah. you know, diligently. So, we really respect that, uh, Doctor Luin, and really hope that it stays that way. It becomes even better. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, perhaps Seychelles has uh, eliminated malaria already. Is it true? Yes, Seychelles for us, uh, malaria is not endemic. We do not have mm. the mosquito. Mm. Yeah, so it was never Wonderful. an issue. Great. We only get a few imported, imported cases. Yeah. So okay. because we don't have the mosquito, that's very, <laughs> right. it's very good. <laughs> uh, so good, you know. Uh, we deal with so many vector-borne diseases. It's not just malaria, dengue, chikungunya, yeah. and so many. So so good that you are in that spot. So, uh, so Dr. Lewin, what about the next ninety months? Uh, uh, how can Seychelles, which is already uh, having the TB pandemic under so much of control, very few cases, but mm -hmm. still, uh, like how uh, how can uh, you know you hit the zero? Okay, for us, the key population would be injecting drug users, people who, who use drugs. This is one area that is causing us problem, which I think one, one thing we should invest in is to be more proactive in that group, offer them services, decentralized services for, to, for their centers so that we can actively screen for TB, especially the contact tracing, so that they can be put on um, TB treatment very early. The other issue is adherence to treatment in that group of population. We have 
a lot of interaction with methadone and the TB treatment. So they, most of the time they choose the methadone over the TB treatment because they get withdrawal when they take the two together. So I guess this is one area that we really need to work really hard on it. The TB and HIV prevalence is still very low at the moment. Less than 10% of the cases that we get per year is HIV positive. But as the population of drug users grows, well, I think the association will get bigger. So this is one thing that we need to, to, to sort out. Um, right now, we do test and treat since 2014 for HIV. Maybe that's why the number, the, the co-infection between TB and HIV is very, very low. So as soon as you are detected HIV positive, you are screened, you are put on treatment for, for HIV. Everyone on with low CD4 will be screened for TB and you will put, be put on treatment. Yeah, so the other group of a key population is alcoholics also, <laughs> that we're having a, a big issue. Not really with the diabetes yet, but with alcoholics again, with the treatment adherence, uh, coming to the health facilities for, for treatment is a big issue. Yeah, so hopefully with the family support and the health facility support, we can get through that. Only a one-off, but it is an issue. Even if one patient escaped, doesn't take treatment, it's a, it's a very real issue. So we do, we are conscious of this, that it does affect treatment adherence. Yes, very important, uh, Dr. Lewin, for uh, you to highlight uh, the risk factors of TB. Uh, so TB prevention is not only about latent TB treatment, but also about reducing the risk factors like alcohol, which you said, injecting drug use, of course, um, um, uh, alcohol, diabetes, uh, HIV, uh, as tobacco use, for example, so uh, malnutrition. So uh, how I was reading the global TB report, uh, perhaps uh, tobacco, is tobacco use a problem in Seychelles context and malnutrition or not? Uh, just sorry for my ignorance, but uh, like to... Tobacco. No, no, tobacco use, yes, malnutrition, no. <laughs> it will be the other side of the scale. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, sorry. So tobacco use it is a big issue. Yeah. So we have more issue with obesity now than malnutrition. Yeah. It's well, it's another form. About the, the people who use drugs. So uh, to help uh, screen them for TB, do you, and you said decentralized. So is it, uh, so will, will a decentralized uh, point of care molecular test help along with portable X-ray or those kind of initiatives? Because uh, so that uh, they can, we can know within an hour whether they have TB or not, whether they are resistant or not, and appropriate treatment can be provided mm -hmm. quickly. So Yes. So right now, it's only after they've been symptomatic for a number of months that they do present to the health centers for help. I guess definitely, definitely having a, a di um, point of care test in the centers, in the opioid centers, it will definitely help. For, for the key population, definitely. So we'll see how we can work with uh, other programs and see how we can set it up. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so Dr. Lewin, uh, thanks a lot for uh, you know helping us understand the TV response of Seychelles and also the progress which has been made. We really hope that the TB levels in all other countries in Africa and Asia and the Pacific and Latin America and the world, of all parts of the world comes as low as Seychelles and even lower. We need to all need to end TB as soon as possible because TB is preventable and curable. And let us make it a reality in lives of everyone. So Dr. Lewin, please, have, uh, as you know, the UN high level meeting on TB is about to happen uh, in about two weeks uh, in uh, at the UN uh, General Assembly. So what will be your call to the world leaders to help, uh, you know, uh, strengthen the response to T NTP? Okay, I would say that it is possible. As long as we get the financial support, it is possible to eliminate tuberculosis. Right, absolutely. We we need uh, the, the the fight to NTB fully funded, and in, uh, in, which also includes uh, the the research and development pipeline uh, for even better uh, tools, uh, um, yes. it's such as vaccines, but also resources to implement what we know we already have, like the best of more you know tests, molecular tests, uh, the 
portable hand held x-rays or whatever the best of treatment regimens so so, so it, that is also needs to become a reality and let us hope it does so thanks a lot dr lewin uh, is there anything else which you would like to add before we wrap up no i would like to say thank you for inviting me yeah i mean usually seisha's contribution to tb worldwide is very small but uh, for seychelles because of the population size is very significant so we're still trying and uh, i think the the ministry for still funding the program and fully funded by the government yeah and we're still trying our best to eliminate tuberculosis and we'll continue the fight thank you so much totally uh, support this and totally pray that this happens and this continues to happen very proud that seychelles government takes uh, 100% care of the uh, financial resources of the program as well as you know the uh, this is really important in terms of sustainability uh, but uh, having said that it is also important that uh, support should be there for whatever more needs to happen in seychelles and the countries too so thanks a lot dr lewin morel it was such an or such a pleasure and honor to speak with you a uh, learning for me personally. personally as well and uh, so friends who have joined us late dr louis morel is a medical registrar at communicable disease uh, control unit at the ministry of health in seychelles and uh, uh, and uh, in a noted a uh, person when it comes to fight against tb in seychelles uh, in africa so thanks a lot dr lewin for joining us again so thanks a lot ma'am thank you